Welcome everybody to the Vibrant Culture Podcast. My name is Nicole Greer and they call me the Vibrant Coach. And today on the show, I have the amazing, the talented, the undeniably intelligent Dr. Joey Fawcett. Let me tell you all about him. My mother right? called you, didn't she? <laughs> she did. She was like, do good for Joey, my little Joey. So here we go. So he is an executive coach. He is a culture architect, which I can't wait to talk about that. We're going to talk about his book. He's amazing. Uh, he's got several, by the way. Everybody go to the Amazon, buy one now. Host of the Work Positive podcast, and he had a best-selling book, Work Positive in a Negative World, Team Edition. And that's what we're going to dive into today. Uh, it is a manifesto for developing your positive work culture, which aka vibrant culture. He has mm -hmm. spoken to thousands of people within companies and associations annually for decades. Dr. Joey is a prolific writer of over 1,000 articles and has appeared on the websites of Fox News, CNBC, Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, MSNBC, whew, entrepreneur.com, oh, and countless others. His, contact re his content reaches people in more than 50 countries. He and his wife, who he adores, it's her birthday today, so he mm -hmm. has to get this done and get on with things, <laughs> have two adult daughters and son-in-laws, and don't miss this, the most brilliant and beautiful granddaughter ever born, four grand dogs, oh. and enjoys living in the pleasant Gap Farm with their two cats, a horse, and Maggie May, the Yellow Lab. Welcome yeah. to the show, Dr. Joey. How are I, you? I am so stoked. To, by the way, I am president of the Nicole Greer Fan Club. I'm just like, <laughs> I was elected this morning. And uh, so I'm just waiting for my crown to come in and then I will I will be ready to serve. Okay, very good. Well, I love it when more people join the, the Vibrant Culture team. So I, I have got a great new edition. All <laughs> right. So you wrote you wrote this wonderful book yes. in 2011, and then the you did an updated uh -huh. version uh -huh. um, That's you call the team edition. So uh -huh. tell us about the book a little bit on the upfront, and then let's go through the five core practices in the book. Oh, I'd love to do that. Thank you for asking. So uh, you may remember back in 07, 08, 09, along in there, what was going on economically, really in the world. Oh, my but... gosh. There's a little housing problem. <laughs> yeah. They, I love the euphemisms that economists come up with. It was the Great yeah. Recession. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like it's something you want to aspire to. Who wants to experience a recession, right? Not so uh, I knew the Great Recession at least in the Fawcett household, had reached its zenith, its apex, its peak. When my wife looked at me one day and said, honey, and my wife loves me dearly. We've been together now, well, together, 44 years, married 41. Uh, she looks at me, Nicole, and she says, honey, isn't it time for you to travel? <laughs> and I'm like, not feeling the love. That's right. <laughs> get, get your butt out the door. <laughs> and I said, well... Yes, I, I understand, but the um, the uh, cash cow that I was riding has been slaughtered. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I hate when well, that happens. There, there, was, there was nothing, you know, going on. You remember, I mean, uh, T&D money was gone. And so uh, I, being who I am, decided that was an amazing bit of adversity from which I could, as Dr. Peel talks about, discover the seeds of opportunity within so mm. I began thinking to myself, Joey, what uh, what does the Great Recession mean to you? And I remembered my grandparents, who, both of whom lived through the Great Depression, when depression was an economic rather than a medical term. And mm. I remember hearing all their stories about everything that went into that. So the thought occurred to me, hey, that's what I say to myself. Hey, someone. Hey, you. Hey, you. That's right. Wake up. Uh, we're finding your cash cow. Uh, <laughs> someone must have started a business during the Great Depression that's still thriving today. Wonder how they did it. Mm -hmm. So I started my research since I had all this time at home and <laughs> read, 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 read. Um, Al Gore had invented the internet by then, so I scoured oh, the internet. Yeah. We're grateful, Al. Thanks, Al. <laughs> Oh, I love saying that in front of my friend, Dr. Bob Johansson, who actually was 
working with the DOD in the early 70s to create the ARPANET, which became the Internet. But anyway, that not aside, I began researching through the Great Depression who created a business, whose businesses are thriving today, how did they do it? Because if you want to talk about a vibrant culture, if you're able to start a business or continue a recent business, recently started business through the Great Depression, and it's still going today, you know, you've done something that I want. There's to some do. magic in there. Yeah. Yeah. So I came to call these people, Nicole, uh, Great Depression gurus. And when I examined their habits, and it didn't matter what industry it was in, but I looked at their habits and their habits really coalesced into what I came to call core practices because there were common sets of habits that address certain aspects of who we are. And so I just found five core practices and I began putting them into practice in my own business. And despite the great recession, right? What can I learn from this adversity was my driving question. So despite the great recession, I began doing more business and better business and began talking about how this is working, what I was learning, because I'm a compassionate, generous person. I wanted to share it with others. I wanted other people to do the same thing. Entrepreneur Magazine picked up on some of that and said, hey, Dr. J, would you like to do a book? And I said, well, yes, since you brought it up, yeah. So, uh, so I've been on a mission ever since. Now, that was 2011 when that book got published because it, it's like birthing elephants. You know, it takes a while two-year gestation period before you get to see the baby. Right, right. Um, but nobody wants to hear about the labor and delivery. Everybody wants to hold the no, baby. No, it's so, ugly. It's messy. That's, yeah, that's when the book came out in 2011. What I discovered from there was, as we talked about previously on when you were on the Work Positive podcast, top, as my friend Lindsay Dowd says, top-down culture transformation is important. But what mm -hmm. happened in so many of the companies I was working with was that it dammed up that culture transformation either got misinterpreted, mistranslated, or just damned up, I like to think about it. And there wasn't even a trickle at the mid-level manager area. And so the the teams who were building the widgets or client-facing, customer-facing, they really didn't get to experience the full culture transformation. So the second book, which Morgan James published in 2020, uh, was... Work Positive and Negative World Team Edition. So really, we changed the POV from Entrepreneurs and Owners in the first one, Entrepreneur Magazine, right? So Entrepreneurs and Owners to Managers and Teams so that now everyone can take responsibility for and play in the culture transformation field to create a positive work culture. That's fantastic. Yeah. And so what the world needs is some positivity. So I mm. want to go through, and I, and I do think... We all know you can't turn on the TV. You can't watch the news without, you know, like you said, going through a depression. Uh, so I think I think you're on to something here. So let's, yeah. that's right. So let's look at the core practice number one, which is perceive mm -hmm. the positive at work. Yeah. So I want to know about, first of all, how do we perceive the positive at work? What do we do with what we're thinking? Mm. What do we do with this gray matter at work? Tell us. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, we could we could spend this podcast and other podcasts talking about the perceived the brain. practice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the brain. So I promise not to geek out. I'm not a neuroscientist. I've not even played one on TV. However, okay. I do read a lot and understand the brain far better than I ever have before. And your brain is amazing, by the way. I'm just telling you. Uh, mm. vibrant culture nation it's amazing absolutely amazing and you can train your brain to do certain things and your brain is already trained to do certain things it's trained your behavior so as i like to say a vibrant culture or a positive work culture starts and stops in your head that's step one we can talk about it at a strategic level but could i just be tactical for a moment so that your yeah. listeners get something they can start doing tomorrow morning yes we want um, to do an action step yeah, exactly. One of the best tactics that I've discovered is to, instead of using push media, use pull media. Because as you indicated, we turn on the TV or whatever audio source you use. I, uh, for a hundred, uh, well, for some time and early in my career, I was on what we now refer to as terrestrial radio. So I say radio, but actually the audio sources are more out there. So if you're talking about other podcasts, 
you really, really, really want to limit the amount of negative content that you allow into your mind. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about push media, it's radio and TV primarily. Don't tell me you just cutting it on for background noise. It, by the time some of us get to work, Nicole, our brain is already marinated in negativity. If you think for a hot second that the editors in LA or New York or wherever your news comes out of, uh, London, wherever, is anything but monetized negativity, you are sadly mistaken. Their mm -hmm. mantra is if it bleeds, it leads. And so the bloodiest, worst news is at the beginning of every newscast. And if you're still alive mentally and emotionally, by the end of that newscast, they may throw you a cat story or something warm and fuzzy, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So it, it's just the way it is. They're in business to monetize negativity. Uh, it's chicken little on steroids. Uh, it and I like my chicken without steroids, by the way. But Me anyway, it's, the sky Organic, falls all the way. on you all day, every day. Uh, it's an Eeyore vampire world. Eeyore, right, says it'll never work. Vampire, because when the sun goes down, that is, you're away from work, right? Still in the back of your head, circling around, sucking time, energy, and attention away from the people that you love and want to play with, right, and choose to live with. So you just got to limit the amount of push media and instead pick up your phone, choose diverse news sources so that you're not living in an echo chamber. If you can avoid an echo chamber, it's really good. Find challenging perspectives that is challenging to your held beliefs, however you interpret the world, just so you can create some uh, unity as to who you are in the midst of all the diversity in the world. So step away from the TV in the mornings and instead do a couple of really simple things. Find something positive to read, uh, something positive to listen to, like the Vibrant Culture podcast. I'm a big music person. I mm -hmm. don't play it, but I do enjoy consuming it. So I don't think Hank Williams Sr., I'm so lonesome I could cry, would make a really good song in the yeah. morning. But there are tons of other songs that you can listen to and just put a little pep in your step. You are literally creating neuroplasticity. You're taking advantage of your brain's neuroplasticity and creating new neural pathways. Just keep it positive. Something that encourages you as a person to do your best work. 100%. I love that. Okay. So first things first, we're going to put positive thoughts in our mind. So that's core practice number one, perceive the positive at work. All right. The second one um, is conceive, all right, perceive, no, we have conceive, uh, mm -hmm. conceive the positive at work. So how do we do that? How do we, uh, start to see what is positive and then hold it to be true? Tell us about that. Absolutely. And that starts and stops in your head. Remember, because you right. want to focus on the positive and filter out the negative from your thoughts. It's not that the negative is a, you know, sound and light show. It's something that's real. It exists. So you got to do something with it. So you filter it out. So what's happening, Nicole, is when you begin to focus on what's going right at work and, and right in your world and filtering out what's not those negative experiences and you're choosing to really accentuate that positive, you're going to notice pretty quickly, like after week one, not everybody does this. Oh my gosh. We know. <laughs> in fact, I would say that when you are focusing on the positive and filtering out the negative, when you're perceiving the positive at work, you're going to be seen as weird because the conversations in Zoom rooms, the conversations uh, around coffee pots, you know, depending on whether you're hybrid or distant or in person, you're just going to look weird to people and you're going to sound weird. Congratulations. We're all weird anyway, as Seth Godin says. But you're the right kind of weird. Or as I tell people, you're my kind of weird. You know, <laughs> like vibrant culture, work positive culture. Nicole, you're my kind of weird. So yeah, ditto. what you want to do since you're focusing on positive thoughts and filtering out negative thoughts, you want to do the same with people. All right. Keep talking. Doesn't sound very compassionate. However, my favorite business philosopher, Jim Rohn, was fond of saying, you're Oh, the my average. gosh. 
you're the average of the five persons with whom you spend the most time. We spend 70% of our waking hours at work. So congratulations, look around you, those five people, you're the average of their influence on you. Mm-hmm. And so, just a quick note, yep. after this, after you're done listening to this, go over to the YouTube, or if you're not already at the YouTube, and put Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, in the little search box mm-hmm. and watch anything by Jim Rohn. He popped off the planet now, but yeah, right. indeed. But love, love, love Jim Rohn. Darren Hardy and some other amazing people kept a lot of his videos alive. So there's mm-hmm. like 5,392 Jim Rohn videos. You'll understand why he's my favorite business philosopher after you mm-hmm. watch the first one. And yeah, he has that southern accent you know i'm, I'm southern you're southern it's worse you're, than yours jim, jim Rohn is a whole new level of southern right yeah yeah so anyway who are those five people you're spending the most time with and your patterns and behaviors even on a physical standpoint you know uh the framingham heart study proved years ago and i write about this in the team edition book the framingham heart study proved years and years and years ago that you are, let me see if I can get these numbers close. Um, If you are working or spending a lot of time with persons who are divorced, for instance, you are 147% times more likely to divorce yourself. I just think about that. If everybody else is complaining about their ex or in a marriage that's dissolving, you start coming home and looking at things in your spouse that Everybody's got them, right? We've all got warts, but you see them front and center now. Um, They studied heart disease, Framingham Heart Study, right? So looking at stressors that lead to cardiac arrest. Um, Right. If you hang out with persons whose um, dietary consumption is, let's say they're on a Krispy Kreme diet, which I love Krispy Kremes. A friend of mine's on Mm. their board of directors, uh, but I eat them rarely, right? Uh, If if you with people are on a Krispy Kreme diet, guess what's going to happen to you? You're 172% more likely to be obese because those are the persons you're hanging out with and you become like the people you hang out with. So when, as, as we talked about on the Work Positive podcast, and you did such a great job of talking about it, Nicole, creating a vibrant culture means culture fit is paramount. So there need to be some common values that we hold as core. And that's the conceived core practice. How do you deal with negative people without becoming one yourself? And then the five key characteristics of work positive dream teams. That's what we want to do. We want to learn emotional intelligence when dealing with these EOR vampires. And we want to create teams that have off the resume characteristics that build health and vitality for all of us. Mm, Absolutely. All right. So I love the the, uh, rhythm we've got here, the perceived, the conceived. And now the third core practice is believe the positive at work. So how do we shift people's belief systems? This is a big, tall order, but I I know it can be done. Yeah, I've had my I've had my belief system shifted a couple of times in this 58 year old (laughs) life. So it can happen. People, people can change. I'm telling you. Absolutely. Well, and and as executive coaches, both of us are committed to that. Right. Raising a level of awareness and then choosing actions that align with that new awareness. And that's where transformation takes place. Very, very hopeful. You and I both are about the individual and therefore the organization's ability to transform itself when aligned actions come into play. So, um, by the way, all five of these core practices rhyme. So when I'm standing on a platform in front of 1200 people, you know, I might stand up, but my brain could sit down halfway through it. So <laughs> they yeah, all rhyme. I think so it's I fantastic. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. So the belief core practice is all about your emotional engagement with your work and the necessity mm-hmm. of being emotionally engaged in your work. That's the pathway, the clear pathway to innovation and creativity, which is a competitive advantage of any company in any industry in any country on the face of this planet. It's creativity and innovation. What are some ways that we can solve problems, people's problems, clients, customers, problems in new ways? And oh, by the way, every day, a new problems cropping up. It may sound like it's familiar and it may resemble previous problems, but there are new problems that are coming up every day. 
So your need to innovate and create is amazing. That's the pathway to profitability. Or as I like to say, Nicole, when you're growing people, you're growing profits. Mm -hmm. It's just a straight line connection. Grow people, grow profits. It's Amen. so good. So you and I talked on uh, when you were on the Work Positive podcast all about engagement and uh, how, <laughs> how artificial engagement surveys really are. Um, oh my gosh. Some people are not honest in them. Let's just face it. Cause I, you know, this may supposedly be anonymous, but I know the boss is going to track it back to me because big brother and big sister, both are watching you today. Right. So, right. <laughs> so what do we do? We, we have those communication sessions. We just sit down and as a manager or leader and say, how's it going? What are you doing? What can I do to serve you? That's the big lift question, I think, that causes someone's happiness to move up the scale. Uh, it's empathy. Uh, boy, Rob Volpe, Joshua Friedman, guys like that that have been on the Work Positive podcast are just immensely helpful in saying to managers, here are some questions you can ask. Here are some characteristics you need to put in place. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, which I assume most of us are now, go to the Emotional Intelligence Network group. I think there are, uh, gee, I don't know, several hundred thousand uh, people on there now. There's so much great information about how you can emotionally engage others. And again, we talked about this some on um, the Work Positive podcast. Belonging and becoming are huge. And those are two tactics that you can begin today in having those conversations to create emotional engagement with your team. Belonging being how do my daily tasks align with the company mission? I need to see my place in the sphere of the problems we're solving for people. What is my contribution? It doesn't matter whether I'm sweeping the floor or I'm making executive $100 million decisions. I need to see my place in that. And the other is becoming. I want to know where we're going as a company. Again, the clarity around that. And I want to know how I can add skills to my strengths to help us get there because I'm all in with purpose and passion when I'm engaged. And that's where innovation and creativity come from is belonging and becoming. And that's how you believe. Mm, that's fantastic. All right. So I couldn't agree with, I'm just going to say, that's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we, we, we've got our five core practices. We're talking with Dr. Joey Fawcett. And so the first one was perceive the positive. The second one's conceive the positive. The third one's believe the positive. And the fourth one is achieve the positive. And so we're going to go to that next. And don't forget, this is from his book available on the Amazon, Work Positive in a Negative World, the team edition. So talk about achieve the positive at work. So now we, we are got our head in the game. We're looking at mm -hmm. our thoughts. We are cooperating. We are analyzing. You know, I'm talking with somebody who's positive. I'm surrounding myself with the right people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm starting to figure out how I and my skills and my talents uh, can align with the vision to get where I want to go. So I'm starting to believe I can do it. Now I actually start achieving. Core practice for achieve the positive at work. Talk about that. Yeah, uh, we talk a lot about productivity, Nicole, and mm -hmm. we want everybody to be more productive. Uh, we just mm -hmm. need to do more. Get, you know, get her right. done. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, the fact of the matter is most of us want to rush right to this physical dynamic of a work positive culture, and that's the Achieve Core practice. We want to rush right to that. Give me uh, hacks for how I can be more productive and things like that. Mm -hmm. The hack is to go internal first, which is perceive, conceive, and believe. And when you are aligned with perceive, conceive, and believe, then you achieve. And, it, and it's the natural consequence of perceiving, conceiving, and believing. Mm -hmm. Is it tactical? Yes. Is it productive? Yes. Do you sell more? Do you get more done? Do, does the company grow more profitable? Yes. Is it sustainable? As long as you stay in the perceive, conceive, and believe space, and that's continuing in the background, you will achieve more. So the, the hacks, the productivity hacks, the things that you need to do, they're making better technology every day that can allow you to be more productive. But the fact of the matter is, if we lack 
action, or I should say when we lack action, and we divorce that from our intentions, which grow out of the believe core practice, right? And our attention, which grows out of the perceive and conceive, because we're paying attention to positive thoughts and positive people. When action is divorced from those, fear emerges in its place. And there's some very common fears that we all experience at work, the fear of failure, uh, the fear of rushing to results, the fear that I, as one person, am not going to be able to make a difference in this culture, regardless of how positive I, I become. All those fears are when you divorce action from attention and intention. But when you act, and it's, it's anything but straight line, when you act and commit to the process of acting, regardless of how zigzagging your progress is, you learn from the experiences, tighten your attention and intention, and see your productivity and the results from your actions zoom, zoom, like a hockey stick. Mm, fantastic. Yeah. So uh, don't miss what he said right there. I'm going to repeat it, but he's going to correct me if I don't get it right. But you have to go inside first before you can go out here and start doing. So uh, the quality of the inward work you do shows up in your outward work. Did I get that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Success is an inside job. Right. Um, you work on yourself, perceiving, conceiving, and believing, and you add action to that. Now, action's critical. Oh, yeah. You can't just sit around, you know, thinking about things. No. Philosophizing. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You got to get off the mountain and come down in the valley and work like crazy with the rest of us. However, there's more joy. There's more fulfillment. There's more satisfaction and meaning and happiness in your work because now you're aligning your thoughts your relationships and your emotions and acting on those yeah 100 percent. all right very good so core practice four was achieved the positive and now we're at we've done our inside work we're taking action we're down in the valley and now we're going to receive the positive at work so talk a little bit about receive the positive at work this fifth core practice surprised me nicole because I did all the research about Great Depression gurus, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, okay, we're perceiving, conceiving, believing. Now we've achieved it, so we're getting amazing results, stellar mm -hmm. results. We're growing people and profits. What else could there be? What I discovered was that these Great Depression gurus, and really everybody who's started a successful company since, are some of the most, well, Robert Greenleaf's Servant Leadership book, right? Um, mm -hmm. shaped and formed me immensely early, early in my career. Um, the, their ability to say thank you and to be philanthropic in saying thank you, their ability to literally squeeze themselves dry so that they could receive more to squeeze again. So it's an abundance mentality, if you will. Their mm -hmm. ability to serve others was stellar. So it wasn't just let me stockpile positive results. Let me let me sit on the cash. Let me sit on the people, right? It was, what can we do for the people who are keeping our lights on? What can we do to say thank you? Which is huge, right? Because mm -hmm. we all owe something to somebody. Gratitude. It's a thing, people. It is. And there's been so many amazing studies done about gratitude. I'll give you one tactic yes. that I, I've done every evening for years and that is every evening i code my brain for great sleep and a positive awakening experience the next day by writing three positive experiences i've had that day in my gratitude diary and it doesn't mm -hmm. take a long time but what mm -hmm. it does is instead of me you know whatever tv show i'm watching or god forbid the evening news right instead of me trying to escape a tornado or a fire or you know a murderer in my sleep, right? My subconscious mind is perking on amazing experiences that I had that day that for which I'm grateful. Now, look, I get it. I, I'm not Namby Pamby. I'm not rose colored glasses or Pollyanna. I understand some days suck and it, it's just part and parcel of life in this broken world and working in it, especially. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we were just talking about somebody who was released by a major household name company, right? Yeah. It, Happens. Never saw it, it coming. 
Yeah, never saw it coming. It's happened to me before, right? Mm -hmm. Happened to me two weeks after I was married to honey. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was like, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> she was looking for an exit ramp, but she stuck it out, <laughs> right? So how do we say thank you to these people in ways that are meaningful? It starts again in our head. So we're coming back around to the perceived core practice, right? By just being grateful. And when those days suck, you know, hey, look, Nicole, there have been days when I wrote my gratitude diary. Grateful that I didn't get run over by a concrete truck today. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm still alive. Uh, live to fight another day, right? That's There's exactly Some right. days like that. But if you make a practice of that, and of course, Sean Aker taught us the 22nd rule, right? That notebook's in my nightstand. I pull it out. The pen's already there. That day, I, I wrote the date for that day, the previous evening. So I am up and writing in my book in 20 seconds. So that's the path of least resistance, right? I don't have to worry about a whole lot of activation energy in order to write my gratitude. So I'm just saying thank you to whomever you say thank you to. Um, I'm just saying thank you. Grateful that I got to have lunch with my four-year-old granddaughter today. You know, grateful mm -hmm. for a new client today. Grateful for Honey's birthday today, you know, that we've gotten to be together for so long just a lot of gratitude that goes into your subconscious, which by the way, can process 4 million bits of information per second. Mm. And whose job it is to filter what comes into your conscious mind. So that's floating around in my mind all night long. So that when I wake up in the morning, which is usually a battlefield experience in your mind, right? You know, as you're rolling over to get out of bed after the, where's the bathroom, right? then it's, you know, it's a battlefield. It just allows those things for which you're grateful, those experiences for which you're grateful to percolate into your conscious mind. And it helps you greet the day in amazing ways. 100%. Yeah. Oh, I love all of your eaves. Let's go through them. Okay. So the first one is core practice one, perceive the positive, right? Get your brain in the game. Core mm -hmm. practice two, conceive, right? So take a look around. Who are you working with? What well, you know, watch the Jim Rohn video when you get done here. Then starting to believe what you're capable of, looking at that, doing this inside work. First three of his core practices are about getting your inside work done so you can go out and start doing, get her done, achieve the positive work. And then uh, when things go well, be grateful, receive the positive. I mean, come on, this it, it's pretty simple, but people need it broken down. And Dr. Joey Fawcett has broken it down for us. He's got 21 chapters to help you get your head in the game so that you can be positive, work positive in a negative world. I, I'm so grateful you have come and downloaded all of this genius. Oh, you're very kind. Well, just to express my gratitude, um, the Work Positive in a Negative World Team Edition book is available to the Vibrant Culture listeners, the Kindle version for only 99 cents. We went oh. and had that done uh, in time for this podcast so that it could be just right there for 99 cents. If you don't get 99 cents worth of value out of reading the stories in this book, which is a story-driven business book, if you don't get 99 cents value out of it, you just email me at Dr. Joey at workpositive.today and I will send you your money back. Okay, that is a fantastic offer. All right, everybody. So we also want to know if we wanted to get up with you. You just rattled off your email there real quick. So slow down in case we had to go get a pen. Uh, tell us where we find you. Find, tell us where we find you on the web. Tell us about sure. your podcast. Give us your email and then we'll wrap it up. Well, wherever you're listening to the Vibrant Culture podcast, you can listen to the Work Positive uh, podcast right there as well. Wherever finer right. podcasts are heard. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you can just go whatever your favorite platform is and just search for Work Positive podcast. It's weekly. I have amazing guests like the Nicole Greer <laughs> right on there. And our Work Positive YouTube channel also is a part of that plat uh, our platform. So Wherever you're listening, just look up Work Positive. The web address is workpositive.today. That's workpositive.today because that's what we want you to do is to work positive today. Yeah. Um, there you'll find a gift, uh, one of our mini courses called Something to Talk About. 
you know, Nicole, we all talk about work and sometimes our conversations need some transformation. Uh, so there are five modules in that mini course that help you transform the way you talk about work, which of course affects the way that you actually work. So it's to help you create a positive work culture right where you are. Trust me, you can leave the job you're in now and go to another company, but the odds are you're going to find that those same people are working at the new company as working at the previous company. They just have different name tags. Absolutely. And the Work Positive <laughs> newsletter is there also. Uh, that features my blog, uh, an excerpt from one of my many books, as well as the podcast weekly, too. And please connect with me on LinkedIn. I love sharing content from amazing people like Nicole, as well as our own content there on LinkedIn. A lot of good things happen on LinkedIn. So connect with me there as Dr. Joey Fawcett. All right, everybody. I am so grateful that you tuned in for another episode of the Vibrant Culture Podcast. Please go down to the bottom of your screen, whatever device you're on, and click the like button. Give us a thumbs up. And then, of course, subscribe and then go over and find the Work Positive Today podcast with Dr. Joey Fawcett and get a double dip of positivity and vibrancy. It's been great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I uh, Thank you, Nicole. Thanks for listening.